Vale, vale. Vale, sí. Bon, bon dia a tothom. Hello and good afternoon. Please take your seat. Take your seat. We're going to start the press conference with Barca's coach, Xavi Hernandez. Please introduce yourselves and the media you represent. Hello, Xavi. How are you? Sergi Bilalta from Barca TV. Hello. So tomorrow the European Championship is back to Camp Nou against a large rival. What do you expect from tomorrow's match? Well, it's a great match. It's going to be a very important match, both for followers, fans who love football. Probably we are at a very good moment, both of us. In the season, both Manchester and us are very uh, well when it comes to our level of fitness. And I believe that it's been a while that we are now back on track. And they are as well. They are a very powerful team with an incredible physical capacity. They are very strong in terms of their defense. So, of course, they can make our life difficult tomorrow. I am expecting a very intense match with a very fast pace. Premier League matches are quite demanding and we're playing in Europe and we want to prove that we are at the level of Europe. So we are playing against a very important rival. Uh, so it's a very important match again. Hello, Xavi. How are you? Catalonia Radio. So I would like to ask you if Manchester United today, is it a champions level team? Well, this would be unfair because at the end of the day we are playing at the Europe League and we have not deserved to be at the champions, nor have they, they them. But I believe they are at a very positive moment in terms of the outcomes they achieve, etc. And they are in the growth. If you compare them at the beginning of the season and now, they are very strong today. So it was about time to see them strong again. I believe it's going to be quite a very spectacular match. Of course, we're not playing at the champions. We are both at the Europe League. But again, the level is very high. Hello, Xavi, Raku. I would like to ask you about pressure. Do you feel pressed, considering the financial circumstances, considering that you have been eliminated from champions at a very early stage. Do you believe this can define somehow the future of the team institutionally speaking? No, 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 this is not how I feel. This is, exact, this, this is the same question I got in the past. Now, if we make it through the eliminatory, you will ask me the same. And the same and the same, and I'm convinced about this. And, you know, we are the Barca. We have challenges ahead all the time, and every week it seems like it's um, the same old thing, right? It's like, oh, now it's a very important moment for Barca. Yeah, well, of course, we face challenges on a weekly basis, so we take things as well as we can. We are motivated. We are even euphoric, I would dare saying. The environment is very positive, and I believe our fans are very happy. So we are happy yet cautious, humble. We want to make it through the competition. Nonetheless, we are facing a very important rival, and for sure it's not going to be an easy match. But again, not like we feel an extra pressure. We feel the normal pressure of being in Barcelona. Hello. Here, Dialetica, at your right. Oh, hello. Here you are. I would like to ask you about a player, Marcus Rashford, if I am not mistaken. He has scored eight goals in the Premier League. Uh, when playing against Madrid, you use Vinicius. I don't know if in this sense, in the case of the United, you see a similar profile because they have very strong player there. And I don't know if this could be a good antidote or not. Well, as you know, I am not going to be displaying the alignment until tomorrow because not even the players know the alignment. 
but not like we are expecting only one player. We have assessed what they are doing when it comes to striking, when it comes to defense. I know they are very quick when it comes to transitioning. Right for Garnacho, Sancho, Vegorst, who might be also a reference player for tomorrow. So the transition is very quick. The counter strike is a very quick also. They have a strong legs. So we need players who are capable of correcting these very fast transitions of Manchester United. Okay. Um, hola, Javi. Andy Mitten. Hola. Uh, you nearly signed. Manchester United tried to sign you as a player. You played your first European game at Old Trafford under Louis van Gaal. You played against Manchester United many times. What's your perception of the club and memories from when you played uh, against them? Well, when, when we play against uh, these kind of clubs, Manchester United, in my opinion, is a, is a big club in Europe. Of course, they are not in the, in the best moment of uh, their history, but uh, they, they are Manchester United. We respect them a lot. We respect Ten Hag, all the players. Uh, now we, they are in a, in a very good moment. Uh, they are positive, good, uh, good results in the last uh, in the last weeks. So very difficult. We respect a lot them. Even we are in Europa, Euro, Europa League, but uh, we respect them a lot. Uh, it will be really tough and really difficult to beat them. Hi, Tavi. So you understand that the winner of this knockout uh, is going to be the favorite for the title and also that it's going to be complicated, that there's many differences between the two um, before the second leg? Well, yes, I believe that uh, I would be surprised if everything was decided tomorrow. I would think we will decide things in Old Trafford because I expect a tight um, result, uh, and in the end, it's two games. Uh, it's a knockout. So tomorrow, just a few things will be decided. It's a pity that can't, we can't play the second leg uh, at home, but this is what we earned for ourselves in this competition in Europe. I don't think we're favorite. I don't think Manchester is a favorite for the title I'm in. Mean. There's uh, great teams in these competitions. There's uh, been a combination of results and teams that were already in Europa League that makes it a very tough competition to win. Hi, coach. Uh, this is Alejandro Segura, live for Radio Marca. I don't know if you have the feeling, um, since your team is uh, the best time of the season, you're good offensively and defensively. The midfield is also working. Maybe if the team had been like this in October or November, maybe you would be playing in a different competition now. Well, yes, but we can't go back, right? Of course, you, I mean, I could have thought I could have changed uh, tactical thing or players. Or, I mean, you never know, right? It's uh, easy looking back. Uh, but in the end, it's a competition. We were not at the level expected for uh, champions. And we are here. Now we need to play and compete in this competition. And we're at a good time. But still, we need to prove ourselves in each game. You know, with Barca, every game is an exam, every practice, every press conference, because there's a lot of demand. Everyone's very demanding, the club, the uh, environment. Uh, and there's always a huge pressure. But we need to prove ourselves in every game. So it's been 16 matches that the team has gone unbeaten. It's the best you have achieved. Nonetheless, I consider that this match, while well, you say that it's the same thing, once, uh, that we ask you the same thing once and again, but considering the opponent, you have a major challenge ahead tomorrow. Of course, every match is a challenge. And when we play against Cadiz, it's going to be important because we are playing three points there. This one is going to be important. Old Trafford is going to be important. And should we make it through? Uh, the next one is going to be important as well. So it's about focusing on the game tomorrow, on the match tomorrow. I've been informed that the stadium is going to be fully booked. So terrific. I believe it's going to be a, a very nice match. And we have to be at the level that Europe requires. David Bernabeu. Hello, Charlie, and good morning. Sport TV. Well, I believe uh, your idea, your football idea is quite clear because uh, you advocated it before you came here as a coach. 
And now the team is growing very much defensively with the last uh, line, which is powerful, which wins, uh, you know, duels, and uh, you have a lot of a lot of defensive correction. But the thing is that there's people that maybe tries to despise this idea you've always had, saying that Barca is growing from a perspective which is not ex exactly the one you were suggesting. It's like you defend more than you attack. I don't know what would be your message as a coach, uh, you know, against this type of theories. But who am I addressing? I don't. I don't really understand. I mean, who am I addressing? I mean, you know, there's uh, fans and people. There's a. Uh, uh, journalists and people who defend that. Well, I'm on the other side. That's it. I don't have to convince anyone, just my players. Uh, I, I need to convince them of this idea, this uh, play style, and they are really putting it to practice very well on the pitch. And it was hard because it was a change in the model, in the play model, and we are growing now. I just need to convince, again, my football players mainly, of also the managers of the club and the uh, members and fans of the club, and I believe we are all on the same page. Uh, I mean, the stadium is full, the players are convinced and go along with this idea, and they um, give everything in each game, and I see the president every two, three days, he's happy, he loves the way we play with Mateo and Jordi, I see them every day, and same thing, so I'm completely reassured, and if someone is not convinced, well, too bad for them, right? I mean, that's my idea. And, uh, you know, inside in the locker room in the club, we are convinced. So in England. Um, Hi. Eric Ten Hag said this week that he thought Marcus Rashford was one of the most dangerous strikers in Europe. Would you agree? One of the... Yes, yes, fully agree because... It's very fast. Uh, he has very good dribble. One, one v one. Yes, uh, in the transition is very, very dangerous. So, yes, we need to take care of all of them. But especially Rashford is yes one of the most uh, dangerous players now in in Europe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, David McDonald from the Daily Mirror. Um, Manchester United tried to sign Frankie De Jong last summer. There was a huge saga lasting many weeks. Um, how did he react, and how did he, how did that um, affect him? in terms of all the uncertainty over his future um, and how impressed have you been with his form this season and do you feel that he may have a personal point to prove against Manchester United tomorrow given what happened uh, last summer? No, I think uh, he was he was really clear uh, to me uh, he wanted to stay with us so uh, there was no uh, doubt so now he's our player I'm really happy and satisfied with his performance his leadership He's in a very good moment, like all the teams, so now Frankie, I think he's enjoying on the pitch, and this is the most important thing. David Ibáñez. Hola, Xavi. Hello, Xavi. David Ibáñez, media ser. So, Xavi, you were saying that uh, you have to prove yourself in every game, and you have to stand to these uh, demands. But today, tomorrow is a good game to, you know, prove yourself and win, actually, after the important uh, games you've had in Europe. Well, again, it's always important, and even more so in Europe. We've had some seasons with no wins, and tomorrow, I mean, even if it's Europa League, it's important for the club and for us to prove ourselves that we can actually compete in Europe. That's a good test for us, definitely. Hello, Xavi. So this is probably the best time of the season for you. You're leading La Liga, but the Europa, Europe has uh, been complicated for you in the last few years. Have you learned from your mistakes in the past? And uh, are you excited about this uh, knockout, even if you're not in champions? Well, I still would like to be in champions, I believe, because of the size of the club and our history. We deserve to be in champions, uh, but we were not up to the um, level in uh, the beginning of the season, but we need to, you know, play Europa League. It's a beautiful competition with the teams we've got. It's a tough one, and we're excited about competing and winning this knockout tomorrow.
Good morning, Xavi from La Vanguardia, Anais Martinez. The last time you played here in Camp Nou, a Europe League match, there was an invasion of Germans. Do you applaud the control and identification mechanisms implemented by the by the club? Of course, we cannot fall into the same mistake again as a club, so I hope that tomorrow our fans are going to be there, our supporters are going to be there, and I hope that we can, and I hope that we will show our best possible level. I believe we have learned from our previous mistakes, and I hope it's not going to happen again. Aurora, Miss Andaman. Aurora, Herrera, sí. Hola, Xavi. Aurora, Fuster, para Principal Puncat. El principal punto, I would like to ask you regarding your defense technique and the goals that you have, let's say, been thrown in the champions. You ended up being gold 12 times. So what's the difference between one and the other? Well, we try and avoid any differences in terms of, I mean, independently of which competition we're playing at. But of course, it's going to be difficult. The level is very high. But we want to prove that we are at a good moment, that we are focused, that we are working down in the defense to recover the ball, that we are better and better when it comes to dwells and defense strategies. And tomorrow, we have a test ahead to prove that we can make it in Europe. Good morning, Juan. Hello. So since the previous season, uh, as Sergio Ramos has reminded us, goals outside home uh, do not count the double. Do you agree with this measure? Do you think this is more fair, or do you consider it would be better to ensure to, to, to keep the previous system? I believe this is a more fair system. I believe that. Well, you know. Mm, I believe extra time is more fair than the previous system. Josep Cape. Josep. Buenos dias. Hi, Tavi. So today there has been an institutional news again. Uh, I just uh, would like to know whether you're following this kind of news and whether this gets to the locker room. Uh, does it have an impact? Or given that you've been in Barca all your life, uh, you are not affected by this kind of uh, things that go on institutionally. What do you mean? Well, there's been news saying that the prosecutor's office is investigating, inquiring some payments to the uh, uh, former president of the uh, committee of our referees. Uh, I don't know if that kind of information gets to the locker room or not. Well, I try to focus on football, on what happens on the pitch, but uh, of course this happens in this club. There's other, th there's other things that happens in the, that happen in this club. Uh, I believe that there was a press release from the club. They just told me we finished the practice 15 minutes ago, and they told me there's been a press release from the club. So I just agree with them. Also, I want us. I was not in the club during those years, but of course I'm going to stand for the club, and that's it. Yes, Tanakh, uh, the coach uh, has said that he wants to play. Cruyff style, as you do. How can you compare him? Uh, how can you compare to him as a coach? Well, Ten Hag is a great coach, in my mind. I believe that somehow, you know, reverting the situation of United was no easy task, and he's accomplishing it. They are excited again at the club, uh, the fan base, also the way they play tells a lot. Uh, he changes things offensively, defensively. Everyone's working very well. So it's a tough rival for us. And he's a very interesting coach in my mind. He does great things, you know, uh, variants of the line of three, the side kicks, uh, the side uh, players uh, go inside. A lot of people go to the offense. He's an offensive coach, I believe, and he proves that in most of his games. So I believe he's a reference for offensive coaches who like this kind of football. Hello, Xavi. Good morning, Adrian Betz. Katie Jugas, Ser Catalonia. So the information that we have displayed this morning about the payments that Barca would have, let's say, done to the committee to 
obtain information about referees according to some testimonies. This dates back from 2003. You were a player back then. Do you remember when you were a player, if at any given time you were given information about referees, about their style, and about how to behave with them? Of course, we always uh, carry out an assessment about referees and about the style displayed by the referee communication-wise. Of course, we work on this, but of course, it's been ages. This is nothing new. It's been the case for many, many years now, internally speaking, that is, of course. <coughs> Hello, Xavi, I would like to ask you about Ronald Araujo. You said before that the defense is performing very well, especially him against Villarreal. So what would you like to say about him? And Well, I believe Ronald is a leader beyond the physical conditions, technical conditions, and of course the personality he brings in the defense line, leadership. Well, he's just an awesome defense defender. He has the characteristics to mark a period in-house at Barca and also internationally. I've seen very, very few players like him. He's a spectacular player. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you.